So this remains with the chairman. And the chairman in the time will be giving back an appreciation gift. Thank you very much. Professor, we're very proud of you. We're delighted about the work you're doing in Makueni. In fact, our friends from India were telling us about uh, stakeholder engagement and public, public participation in their country earlier on, and it mirrors a lot with what you're doing in the county government of Makueni. They are very keen on e-health. I think you're doing a lot of work in terms of the universal health, which work you started uh, way back, but now it's gaining prominence, and I think you're Count is one of those four that are going to start uh, implementing what the government wants to drive in terms of the four pillars. So excited about um, what you're doing and how we wish that some other counties could also excel in something else um, so that uh, we move together as a country. Um, so very delighted to have you here and uh, we appreciate the partnership that we've developed as an institute uh, with your county government. And it's now my pleasure and honor to invite you uh, to speak to the members. I'm aware that we've um, eaten into some time, but I plead with you to allow for more time with the members to engage with you on the Q&A session, because that will speak to their needs. Thank you very much, and most welcome. Uh, one of the driving forces was we wanted a people-driven constitutional process, even the process of making the constitution itself. We kept on saying that we want uh, citizens to be part of that process so that they can redefine, uh, if you wish, even rebrand uh, their uh, country. And so uh, we thought as a country that there is a social contract, that citizens, when they have a government, it's their government, they give birth to it, and they deserve to enter into a contract with that government so that it can do the things that they want, they ask for. Uh, and therefore, the primary office is not necessarily the office of uh, the president or these days also the governor, but the primary office is the office of the citizen. And I think that's actually what our constitution now is uh, about, and that's why we said that we will not simply allow citizens to vote and after they vote, they are not in the public space for five years and they wait and vote again. So in terms of public, public uh, participation, uh, all the stakeholders uh, in a country, the citizens, and in terms of their uh, groupings, uh, there is the intention that they must be involved in decision making. And this is about policies, about plans, about budgets, about anything that is to be done in the public uh, domain. And not only to be involved in the decision making about the content of those policies or plans or budgets, but in the implementation uh, subsequently. Uh, and of course, this public participation, uh, where they become participants in what happens in the public space, uh, it is also related to other key concepts, such as uh, governance, and indeed, the Institute now, uh, its major role is governance. It's not like uh, writing those minutes, people sitting down to write minutes, they write them beautifully and they give them to the board. So there is the question of uh, uh, public participation being related to governance, uh, being related to its extracting accountability and transparency, whether it's of government, uh, of uh, national, local uh, government. Uh, this public participation also contributes to people-centered development so that the development that is happening within a country uh, 
has the people uh, at the center. Uh, when I received material about this conference, uh, integrated thinking and integrated uh, reporting, uh, all stakeholders, uh, whether it's a business organization or, or, or uh, in the business organization, uh, even in NGOs, whatever, all these stakeholders must bring their presence into what is happening, into the decisions that are, are, are taking place. They are to be considered, they aggregate their interests. And I was, I was saying to the chair uh, that as uh, secretaries, when you are advising, for example, the private sector, and, and I think a Bishop uh, talked about it too, uh, that you can actually make more profits by involving all these stakeholders uh, because they will feel that, like Safaricom, uh, this is uh, their company. They have ownership. Uh, my mother uses M-Pesa. My mother calls me and uh, she feels that when she's using money, it's not wasted money. So Safaricom ends up making even more profit uh, because of trying to consider uh, all uh, uh, interest holders. So this concept of people-centered development, uh, even in some instances, as, as was reported about India, of uh, people's governments uh, beyond the national government and federal units or other local uh, governments. Uh, public participation also relates to bottom-up development and citizen control of uh, affairs con concerning their well-being. And uh, uh, there is a, a forum where we were discussing about uh, the beauty of devolution, the unfolding beauty of devolution. Because in the county, because most of the counties are small entities, 47 of them roughly maybe a million less in terms of population, a few have more, uh, people know you, even when you are the governor. And uh, my friend, the chief, former chief justice, told me that uh, Governor Malombe, they used to stop the motorcade. You know, they stop the motorcade and then they tell him that there's a problem with the road. And of course, it stops. And, uh, you know, there's a problem with the road. And sometimes when you steal, they know your mother. So they will tell you, you are going to tell your mother. You have stolen. <laughs> because if you're not afraid of the formal ways of being held accountable, at least you'll be scared of your mother saying, we haven't been thieves. <laughs> what are you doing? People know you. And uh, so there is really very, there is bottom up, as I'll try to explain, bottom up development, and, and, and citizens beginning to feel that they count. And I think in that paper on integration or thinking, there was a one line, every opinion counts. And I think people feel a sense of dignity uh, that uh, they count, their decisions you know, count, and uh, they are a stakeholder. Uh, so in many ways, this idea of public participation uh, is related uh, in the public domain, is related to what you discussed about uh, integrated thinking and subsequently reporting. Uh, because really, it's this new thinking uh, that you have to involve all interests in whatever you do for better results. So some of the purposes of uh, uh, public participation of course, when in the public space we ask people to come together, or sometimes they ask us to come with them, to be with them, uh, we enhance understanding of community problems, needs, concerns, including exploring potential solutions. Sometimes in the county, uh, you may think you have been to school a lot, you may think you know a lot, but you go in citizens' forum and they tell you things that you couldn't have thought about. Uh, sometimes they look simple, like um, uh, recently we went to uh, one ward for a water project. And then a lady says, the technical schools that you have, some of us who didn't study much, why don't you open them up in the evening for us so that we can teach ourselves some skills? That's something that we had not thought. It might look like a simple thing, uh, a logical thing. But people keep on 
coming up with ideas, particularly if they think you are receptive. And if they think that those ideas will be actualized, they will be considered. Uh, of course, through this process of public participation, uh, we look at policies, plans, budgets, uh, projects, uh, uh, as I will try to explain later, in the Makwene situation, uh, from the village level up to the county level, uh, when anything is being developed, uh, people come together and they talk about these things and they bring the ideas onto the table uh, and there is a sense that what will eventually be accepted is not foreign to them. They have participated in it. Uh, when people seriously participate in these processes, uh, it also lead to economic development, to equity in the distribution of resources. Uh, economic development because they will say what they want to happen even in the economic front. Like when Makwene County, there was a decision about universal health care. The people repeatedly came saying that we are being bankrupted by health problems. When our, uh, we are unwell, our relatives are unwell, our friends are unwell, uh, we spend a lot of money. Isn't there a way that we can be helped? And so actually, although this universal health care in Makwene, our version of it, has been talked about as if it was the governor uh, who introduced it, uh, it actually came from the people themselves. Again, they had milk, and the milk was wasting. Uh, and then they sought solutions because they would pour it when the cooperative is not receiving it. And so they said, can something be done to, to correct this situation? So it is not as if the top leadership is very brilliant and it is coming up with these solutions. But uh, you have also the people saying, this is a problem. So how can it technically be uh, 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 addressed? And then, of course, we look for the way in which that uh, can uh, happen. And therefore, uh, we begin to emphasize not just politics, because there's too much politics in Kenya, my opinion, but we begin to say, what about uh, harvesting the fruits of devolution uh, so that we can say country, counties which say they were in the periphery, how do they begin to organize themselves economically? There was political independence, some people question whether there is political independence, but what about trying to say we want economic independence and maybe political independence will follow or it will be, uh, there will be more of it. Equity, because when they discuss their budgets, uh, they will insist that there must be equity. And for example, when we look at a, 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 a subword level, and I'll talk more about that, the, they will take a piece of paper, a big piece of paper, a large piece of paper, and then they will uh, show where there are projects. They'll say, here something has happened. There is a county something here. There is a, a constituency development, national government constituency development uh, fund. Uh, project here. Uh, an NGO has done a project here. They'll say that this place, there's nothing. So again, you can, you, you get a situation of uh, equity driven uh, by the people uh, themselves. And I think in terms of enhancing mindset uh, change, uh, when communities take responsibilities over decisions uh, uh, on issues that concern them, uh, the more citizens realize that they can control their government, they can, uh, what, 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 what they contribute will change, uh, there's more confidence. I think they feel that their dignity is uh, being addressed. And then those creative ideas begin to flow. And uh, 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 you have incrementally mind, mindset change. Uh, one of the radical examples of this mindset change is in a place called Yata. 
uh, where Bishop Masika, uh, they, they had a problem when there was a big famine in Machakos and people ate dogs. Uh, and he was a principal of a, a secondary school and he went home and said he can't continue being a principal if that's happening. Of course in China, dogs are delicacies. Uh, but in our situation, the, that is not so. So he started having like uh, each family having a farm pond. And so there was that kind of agriculture. And, and soon there was transformation in terms of the people now didn't want handouts. They didn't want to have famine. They, they refused uh, to be given a food relief and they were working for themselves. You know, until there was a time you couldn't get anybody who was idle, anybody, you know, this, a lot of drinking and so on. They were even now uh, getting people to work from other places. And there is a mindset change, they are very empowered. Uh, when you go there, the people who teach you agriculture, or one of them said, I know even more agriculture than professors. Uh, so that, that mindset changed. Mm. Because of public participation, people now getting involved mm. in the things that uh, make uh, mm. meaning for them. Uh, project ownership, management mm. and sustainability. Like in the McQueen example, mm. each project has a project management committee. Mm. And this, uh, and of course the beneficiaries mm. elect that committee. And mm. uh, uh, from the initial, from, from, from the beginning, they, they have identified the project there is a budget by them from, for, for, for the project. They, they propose the budget. Uh, so it's their project. And uh, when a contractor comes uh, to that site, uh, he or she cannot be paid unless that committee of villagers says they are satisfied with that project. Of course, there will also be technical people, and there will be uh, our county administration. But it really means that this is their project and they want it to continue even after, after the, the uh, contractor uh, has completed and even after the supervision, the initial supervision from the technical people from the county and the uh, administration. Uh, and I think uh, things that people, even within the family context, you talked about family, things that even children are very much part of they value them. Uh, uh, this seems to be human nature. Uh, again, if there is a holistic public participation, not token uh, public participation, uh, it, it becomes easier for transparency, for accountability uh, between all the people that are involved. Uh, in the county, we, we, we are not scared of uh, this openness. But sometimes, and I think this will change, uh, should change, in terms of some of the national government projects, they will not allow uh, the citizens to be so much present uh, in them. Uh, when it comes to non-state actors uh, uh, like development partners, we, uh, we come together and we coordinate uh, what they are doing, what we are doing, so again there, with citizens also being part of that, uh, I think there is a culture there of uh, 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 more uh, uh, openness. And I think when there is a, a good public participation, this also will advance uh, social justice. Uh, the one thing that I have seen through uh, even a nascent process of uh, public participation it also builds capacities of uh, the community members so that in the things that they do for themselves, uh, such as in their own private sector, in their own agriculture, in their own businesses, they are more uh, empowered. And when this is joined with civic education and with other public education, uh, you're beginning to have a citizenry uh, that is, uh, uh, that is uh, very robust. Uh, there was a time when in Makwene we had a tussle with our account assembly uh, because they wanted a lot of the budget and I was thinking that that is not correct. And then we asked the citizens to come and they 
they become arbiters in this matter. And uh, when they came, about 3,000 of them, representing the leadership, they said now uh, they want to dissolve us. Because I think some of the clever ones had read the, the, the Constitution of the County Governments Act and realized you can actually dissolve a government. Because like one year for eight months, we didn't have a budget. They said we didn't elect you for this nonsense. And they carried, they made petitions and they carried them to the office of the president. Uh, and one might have thought that we were trying to instigate them. Of course, some of the business people would help them with transport uh, because also business was not happening. And uh, as a result, uh, we had also protracted uh, the time when they were saying all the bad things against the government. And actually, the commission, which was established, did say the government should be dissolved. But the president thought that uh, this might open up Pandora's box and uh, there would be uh, a problem with the devolution system in its totality. But you can see that is the power or the potential power of a citizenry that feels that it can participate uh, in shaping uh, its government. Uh, at the international level, uh, public participation is something that has a long history. Although on the continent, uh, we had African continent, we had uh, a problem in terms of accepting it uh, from early, early, early on. And uh, it must first itself in terms of uh, rights of access to information. Something also that is reasoned within our constitution that uh, people deserve uh, to be exposed to public uh, 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 information to access it so that in terms of decision making, in terms of uh, holding leadership accountable, that is possible. Uh, in the international sphere also, uh, there is the right of, of course, to participate in decision making, also access to justice, uh, to provide opportunities for the public uh, to have a say in uh, decisions that are affecting them, and particularly their living uh, conditions. So. Uh, there is the desire to make sure that uh, you can access this information uh, so that it helps you when you raise issues uh, about how a state, how a country, how even local governments and so on, how they're impacting on your uh, lives. The International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, uh, those articles 19 and 25 elaborate uh, on the right to uh, public participation uh, and, 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 and generally at the international level this is a right that is uh, very much entrenched. Uh, the Bajul Charter, the African Charter in Human and People's Rights uh, also talks of uh, freedom of expression and information and uh, 13 freedom to participate in government and uh, Article 25, the obligation of the state to promote and ensure through teaching, education, publication, respect of rights and freedoms in the Charter. Uh, some of these rights in the African Charter were aspirational uh, because although they are there, many of the governments initially, and maybe even up to today, uh, do not uh, uh, honor them. Uh, in the discussion that, that, that you had earlier on, I think the example of uh, India, uh, this is perhaps uh, the country uh, which has the most elaborate structure of public participation from village to state level. And this, I think, is enshrined in the law. Uh, it is not just a question of guidelines or you know, some peripheral regulations and so on. Uh, and, and, and these structures, therefore, would form the organization of the people's government. Uh, and I think you are told of some of the far-reaching things that are happening uh, through these structures, so that there is truly a people's government after the national government, the regional governments, uh, and so on. Of course, in many countries, uh, 
the leadership is afraid of people's power. Because those are many people. And uh, uh, when you don't do what they like, they can tell you go away. Uh, so you must be in a position where uh, you think you'll do your best. And if a time reaches when these people tell you that uh, you're not doing what we want, then you would have to accept uh, that. Uh, but the benefits derived uh, from this uh, public participation, I think, for me, uh, they are very, very uh, important. Uh, again, in the constitutional legal frameworks of uh, South Africa, uh, there is a lot of commitment to public participation uh, through com uh, structures of development committees at the lowest levels. Uh, and they also engage in community-based uh, planning uh, and the people are also part of uh, uh, monitoring, implementing and monitoring uh, uh, projects. So that is not just the technical M&D that we are aware of. Uh, and that is why when you impaired a culture of that kind of accountability and when also there is the history of ANC in South Africa, uh, that is when I think they have sent home two presidents midstream. Uh, because there's a culture of questioning uh, leadership. Uh, and it's only when the leaders do wrong. Uh, they don't do it just for sport, I would imagine. Uh, then there's the case of uh, Porto Alegre in Brazil. I think one could say that's a, a situation which mirrors what happens in, in India. Uh, and this state is uh, very well known for its public participation in the budget process, uh, where citizens present their demands and priorities, uh, and they influence budget allocations. Uh, and, 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 and this is a, a case study uh, of uh, very thoroughgoing uh, public uh, participation. Now, in Kenya, uh, in terms of the legal and policy framework, uh, Article 1 of the Constitution, as we all know, says that the basic power, this is the article which, which establishes the office of the citizen, that the basic power is citizen's power. And whether uh, you're exercising power as the executive or as the legislature, both national and county, or the judiciary even, this is power donated to you by the citizens, and, and, and you exercise it, therefore, on their behalf, and you are not supposed to misuse it. Uh, I think this statement is uh, usually, statements of this kind are not contained in the constitutions. It is said that they are part and parcel of conventions. But in the Kenyan situation, because of our history, uh, we wanted to make sure that the citizen is the ruler. And I think when this dawns on particularly leaders, uh, they, will, they will govern differently because there will be utmost respect uh, to the citizen we call Wanjiku. Uh, and, and, and I think this is really a very, very powerful statement of uh, how we want our public participation in the country. Article 10 on national values uh, identifies public participation as a national value and principle of uh, governance so that once more uh, in what we think our national values are, there is a repetition of uh, public uh, participation and the power of uh, the people. The articles above devolution, Article 174, uh, uh, again talk about public participation uh, uh, and uh, uh, Article 232D again guarantees the involvement of the people in the proce process of policy making in the public uh, service. Uh, a further article talks about counter assemblies also subjecting their matters to public uh, participation, whether it's their committees and so on. And uh, the fourth schedule of the Constitution also talks about. Uh, county governments making sure that communities up to the local level, to the lowest level, 
engage in public participation about all the things that the counties uh, uh, will do. So you can see that repetitiveness, deliberate repetitiveness, wants to really convince us uh, that the, there will be a government by the people, uh, not just to say by the people, for the people, and so on. Uh, you say that and you uh, don't involve the people. Now, in, in, in our county, uh, we thought that we should have three governments. Uh, that the, there is the national government, and there is the county government, and there is a people's government. And uh, uh, in terms of, at the lowest level, that is the village, we have 3,612, 3,612 villages. And from there, uh, several villages come together, and they are a cluster of like 300 uh, uh, village clusters of 300, like like 10 or so villages, sometimes less, uh, together. Then we have 60 sub wards, 30 wards, and uh, roughly the main market centers are 1152, 1158, and those will have uh, urban development committees. Then we have also. Uh, leadership at the sub-county level and uh, at the county uh, level. Now, when we are doing budgets, for example, last time we were doing the, uh, the CIDP, the County Integrated Development Plan, as well as the 2018-19 budget, it starts at the village. Uh, they have, at the village, they have a, an elected committee of uh, 11, where there is also gender representation, youth representation, uh, uh, people, people living with, with, with uh, disability. So they elect those people, and they have a village forum, and therefore that committee. And so during a village forum, for example, when they are considering budget matters, uh, they will uh, meet, and they will say, this is what we want. They'll discuss the challenges they have, and this is what we want in this process. Uh, then, then after, 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 after that level, it will go to the next level, which is the cluster level, the sub ward, up to the county level. Uh, in that process, which we have just we are about to complete, uh, 120,000 people got involved in it, in terms of those uh, fora led by their committees, and of course with the, uh, their government, their, their county government uh, as well. 120,000 people out of 1 million, roughly 1 million of our population. Uh, so that now we thought that when it starts at the village, people can walk to the venue. Uh, they, they don't need uh, transport uh, as such. Uh, again, even when we are, for example, when uh, there are bursaries, uh, we ask the, 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 the village cluster to, to start telling us who are the real orphans. And, you know, when they tell us at the other level, uh, they aggregate the, the, the true orphans, and we give the bursaries, we write checks, we don't make the decisions. And we tell them that if you make wrong decisions because they have to post them on, uh, you know, the, 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 the market center place, or the, 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 the also in the social media and so on. Uh, if they make mistakes, we say you are also accountable because you have lied to us. Uh, uh, you have lied uh, to us. When we are giving loans, uh, uh, because we have something we call Tedeka loans, which is uh, a, a loan and you pay 3%, uh, we also get people, we get the, the, those who will get identified in terms of people who will use the money for economic activity, or sometimes they buy water tanks. Uh, you know, some of the young people, border border, they may use it to buy some uh, motorcycle taxis and so on. Uh, but they, uh, they tell us who will deserve. So that 
uh, even in terms of the economic activity and so on, we really want them to make uh, decisions because the constitution says so, the culture of public participation says so, and so forth. I tried to become a member of a women's group uh, because I found them sitting. There's a lot of organizational life at the grassroots, those village groups, those women groups, those youth groups, those faith groups. There's a, they organize themselves. And actually during the hard days of one partisan, when the government was not doing much, that is what sustained, that is part of what sustained the communities, including the faiths, because they would also do development and so on and so forth. So when I became a member, they told me I will always be the last member. If a new one, a new lady comes, my number is pushed. Uh, so that was one of the conditions. So I found that they have books. When they meet their books, they raise money for their the school fees. They buy each other, you know, a goat. When that goat gives birth, the, the, the kid is given to somebody. So they give each other loans. So I, I said, OK, I would like to, be, to get a loan. What, how do I get a loan? First, I was told that everybody else has to get and until, because I'm always the last one. <laughs> Although I, of course, also paid for a, for, for, for a goat. Uh, I had paid for a goat, but I was told, even after you've paid for a goat, you are still number last. And they told me, for you to get along, we make sure that you work, because if you work, you will repay. And how do you know that somebody works? They told me, we look at the ants. <laughs> that is one of the criteria. They look at the ants. And when the ants of somebody who works, they are, they are evident. Somebody who really works hard. So I showed my hands. Can I qualify? I was told no. <laughs> I can't qualify. <laughs> I'm still waiting for my loan. Uh, so they will give, you know, they will give us that information about loans. And uh, I told you earlier about projects. The, a project in any of these cluster, any of these formations, uh, they will be, the beneficiary will be in charge of it. Uh, of course, be, oh, they are the technical people as well, but before they are satisfied, you can't be paid. Uh, the budget of it has gone through all these levels. When it reaches the county level, where there's a county people's forum, uh, and there, at, at, at upper levels, uh, NGOs are, uh, uh, there's a representation of NGOs, there's a representation of faith based, there's, you know, so that there is a co opted membership. When it gets there, they have to accept it uh, before it can go to the executive committee and before it can go to the county assembly. And at the ward level, because there will be ward projects, when they have decided what are those ward projects in the 30 wards, they come with the, the book which says what they decided. And the governor and the deputy governor must sign that those projects will be in the budget. And after the budget is made, we shall go back and they will look and they'll say, yes, we have seen our imprint in the budget. Uh, of course, some of the things I'm saying are also ideal because I'm not like trying to say that everything that is planned always works because this is a process which is which is a, a, a beginning. Uh, in, the, in the county, we have said people first. We say, Andumbe, Kelang Mbakalila, people first to every household is prosperity. And uh, you know, when we began on that, we thought it was a very good campaign program. When you say people first to every household is opportunity. But now it has become a clarion call, and you know, when you don't, when they don't see some milk or prosperity somewhere, they hold you accountable. They say there is no equity. You know, you are failing. And now, uh, because in Kikamba, it is some milk or indicative of prosperity. Because the Wakamba used to go to Maasai country and they would, they would uh, take cattle. They wouldn't steal. They would take cattle. <laughs> so when they brought the cattle home, they would share the cattle so that every household would have some uh, milk. Uh, and so there was this, this saying, therefore, about prosperity. To every household, it's milk. It's prosperity. 
So the people started saying, we don't want some milk, now we want real milk. Uh, so that again is the power of uh, like rebranding, like how you brand, uh, how you brand, uh, you, 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 you brand uh, yourselves. Uh, the, uh, we, 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 we have said about how the, the, the people are in the budgets, how the people are in the, uh, in the planning. Uh, we also decided that it would be good to have a full-scale directorate of public participation and civic education uh, uh, so that it supports this particular uh, process. Uh, we also have community volunteers 36, 12 community volunteers for every village, resource volunteers. Uh, and these get involved in uh, mobilizing people for public participation, for training, for promoting civic education. Uh, even uh, they are used for collecting basic village statistics uh, so that in terms of the decision making we have data and uh, the technical people process uh, the data and so on. Uh, we involve also professionals from the county uh, in the diaspora. Uh, in Nairobi, uh, we meet with them, and they have also the associations. We meet with them about budgets, about what they think should happen in development, and all that. And also we go to Mombasa, where there is concentration of people from Makweni, and we also venture to go to, go to London, uh, or when we had a meeting for something else for health, and we also talked to you know people who are abroad who have a chapter, a diaspora chapter of people from the uh, from the area. Uh, I think I discussed the the public participation framework uh, from the village up to the county level. There is a, a there is a picture which has been circulated a lot. And actually, this was not about uh, 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 public participation when I was in government. It was, in, uh, it was about, we were discussing about African traditional religion, about Kamba. And that's why you're seeing a lot of old, a lot of old people. These are priests. Uh, you know, this was during the time I was, I was studying theology. And, uh, uh, we were discussing that. Uh, we have also thought that they are marginalized, but it is still public participation. It's not the wrong photograph. Uh, the marginalized groups, uh, people have actually insisted. They come and say, we are people living with disabilities. We want our voice and our issues to get into the budgets and so on. And they are very insistent. Uh, 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 currently, there is even a center, a training center for people with disability, which is coming up because of uh, 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 them telling us what they would like done. Also, people living with HIV/AIDS, uh, they uh, they organize themselves. Uh, they want to talk against stigma. They want to talk about support, including nutrition support, and uh, all that. Uh, even in terms of the HIV/AIDS uh, 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 treatment. Uh, NHIF does not include, the national insurance system does not include treatment for HIV AIDS related issues. Uh, but uh, in Makweni, in our nascent uh, universal health care system, where people pay only for 500 shillings who are 65 and below their households, uh, $5, and they receive treatment from our facilities, uh, also HIV AIDS people are, are included. Uh, Youth also have their fora, and we are trying to establish a Makwene Youth Service. Uh, those were between 15 and 35, uh, about 400,000 people from the population of uh, 1 million. And also representatives of orphans and vulnerable children. And even it, within budget making, we uh, uh, children also are part of that. They, they are, there is fora for children, and they come up with interesting things, uh, like saying they don't want schools built near roads. They say there's dust, there are accidents, you know. Uh, and sometimes they also tell you how bad their parents are through songs. 
uh, through some, because we use several ways of trying to get information uh, from them. Uh, we talked about how the, the project management committees, uh, uh, then uh, one picture at the top, this is uh, our Nairobi diaspora uh, participation about the CIDP and budget, uh, again at the bottom. Uh, the other picture is uh, Mombasa, and uh, there was a, a meeting about irrigation farming, and then the deputy governor with the farmer, uh, they are, they are uh, looking at uh, the farmer's uh, cabbages, I think. Uh, this is also a meeting of, uh, at lower levels of uh, uh, public participation. Uh, an ambulance there. Uh, apart from physical meeting of the diaspora, uh, there is also, we reach them through elect electronic communication. Uh, and also the social media is very, very vibrant. There are all those WhatsApps. Uh, sometimes they are, they are invisible participants and sometimes they tell you anything they want to tell you. And you can't take offense. Or if you take offense, uh, it doesn't help you. Uh, the role of civic education in facilitating uh, quality public uh, participation. We thought that people must have information and knowledge so that they can participate in knowledge. Uh, and uh, because also the constitution as well as the county, county governments act, they talk about civic education. They even say counties can have radios. Uh, we haven't been, we haven't gotten licenses from the national government. Uh, but uh, when I was in civil society, the, the national government was stopping us from doing civic education. They were saying, why do you want people to know a lot? And we thought it was them. But in the first cycle of our devolution, uh, my members of Counter Assembly said that uh, civic education is wasting money. Why don't you build things? Why do you just poor money where we can't see what it has done. But they were smart because they didn't want people who question. Uh, they were smart. Uh, so uh, it has had its challenges in terms of its being operationalized uh, because it is resistant. Because many of the leaders, are, some leaders, are afraid of uh, people who will ask too many questions. Uh, but I, we are thinking that that will change. Uh, some of those things are about the, the uh, working with farmers in terms of their milk. Uh, there's a place called Kikima where there's a, uh, they, they have a plant, a milk plant, and they are able now to take milk to some of the supermarkets. Uh, this is our uh, food processing uh, plant. Uh, we have about 12,000 uh, mango farmers and they asked for, for a long time for a, a plant which can process puree, will go into a juice, and so on. A, and we have stabilized the prices of mangoes. And this is economic activity, which the people have said, this is what we want. Uh, and, and we think that these you know, small industries or cottage industries uh, the, mil the, the, the mango one is quite, it's uh, an investment of about half, of, half B, uh, and it compares with any in the country. Uh, so that's, that's a bit. Uh, sometimes when you go to places, they give you presents. As I got presents, Chairman, I forgot to say thank you to all of you. Thank you very much. If you invite me tomorrow, I'll come back. <laughs> but this was a present, uh, and I... I, I, I told uh, leaders in the county, uh, this chair, which I've been given, uh, by the end of uh, this term, since I can't stand ag again and I'm tired, I'm old, I want to go and be with my grandchildren and spouse, I will give it to the next person. And I will, you know, you say, <laughs> <laughs> to a leader whom you think will also do public participation. But of course, ultimately, uh, you cannot say this is the person you must choose. They must do public participation. So uh, I wish to thank you very much. 
and to say that uh, what you have discussed, the, the, the theme uh, in this uh, conference of really how people are affected uh, by whether it's what an organization does, a private organization, uh, whether it is a public organization, whether it is a social organization like the family, I think when you build on relationships, uh, you cannot go wrong. And uh, all those people develop interest and they develop a sense of ownership and you make more value. Uh, and if it's in the private domain, you may even end up making more profits than you do uh, if you're just looking at the bottom line. And even your workers are not happy. And uh, you know, many people, your stakeholders are not happy. Uh, I wish I was also here for the family discussion because I know a lot of us, particularly uh, the, the male parents, take a family for granted and they think I'm boss. Uh, even if I don't relate too much with these people, uh, I'm the father figure and uh, maybe I have a little money uh, and, and they will follow me. Uh, so I don't have to. I don't have to really invest too much in making those uh, relationships. But at the end of the day, I, I would imagine a time is reached when people say, I wish I related more uh, with people uh, close to me.